Welcome back to PlayStation Livecast. I'm Justin Massigill. I'm joined here today by Anthony and Ashley Birch. We're talking about the new Borderlands DLC, Borderlands 2 DLC, uh, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. Did I get that right? Yeah, well done. Excellent. Well done. Thanks, guys. So this DLC looks like it looks like it's going to be the biggest, baddest Borderlands DLC yet. Can you tell me what's going to make this so huge and why everyone should be looking forward to it? Sure. Uh, well, we've got more new enemies than the other three DLCs combined. We've got more new like level art and more new just stuff to see than the other three DLCs combined. Uh, it's probably the longest DLC by, by a pretty fair margin. We're oh. looking at around 10 hours if you complete everything. And uh, we've got, got uh, new weapons, new enemies, brand new story that's all about that one and all kinds of other stuff. Cool. Uh, so what kind, of, what kind of role does your character play in the DLC in terms of the story? So Tiny Tina, uh, this is essentially a D and D game, but we call it Bunkers and Badasses, and Tiny Tina is the DM. So the entire uh, add-on campaign takes place in her imagination, essentially. Um, so she'll mess up sometimes and be like balance an enemy incorrectly, and be like, oh god, I'm sorry, I have to fix that. And so there's a lot of like random little jokes that happen where Tiny Tina doesn't really know what she's doing and things switch around and that sort of thing. But she's sort of like the narrative. She's driving the narrative of the entire uh, add-on campaign. Yeah. Awesome. Looks like we got her on screen right here. Yep. Yeah, I, the likeness is uncanny. I know, right? <laughs> she did the mocap for us, so you're seeing Ashes. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Oh, cool. Uh, so this story, without getting into any spoilers about Borderlands 2, this story goes to some fairly serious places. Yeah. What's it like as a writer kind of integrating that with what's kind of a, uh, Borderlands is kind of a goofy game. Yeah. So how do you integrate that without kind of going too far in one direction or the other? Uh, with a great deal of fear. Uh, <laughs> we sort of knew that we wanted to give Tina something a little bit more dark to, to sort of deal with, uh, basically based on some deaths of some characters in the main game. Yeah. Uh, basically so that when you completed the game, there's that risk of like, oh, this all takes place in her imagination, so nothing I'm doing matters. Well, no, it should matter in some way, even if it's just in terms of one character coming to grips with the death of her friends or whatever. So. We're kind of balancing the idea that like, ah, oh, you're fighting orcs and it's all fun, ha ha ha. But at the same time, Tina's using this as a way to work through her grief. And so we just tried to make that work. I hope we did. I mean, it was just a lot of like crossing my fingers and praying and hoping that my fart jokes don't get onto my, you know, like, you know, morning stuff too. too <laughs> it's, badly, it's like but. a Reese's peanut butter cup. Two, uh, two uh, interesting well, different right. tastes. That yeah, you almost said good, but farts together. and morning aren't really well, yeah, good. Yeah. 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 Actually, that's the yeah, worst to, Reese's yeah. peanut butter cup ever if you're Wait, eating it. But yeah. Yeah. I had to find a different adjective. Yeah. Uh, so enough of that. Let's talk about the guns, which is uh, the reason a lot of people play Borderlands. What kind of new, crazy, weird weapons and loot can we expect to see in this DLC? Uh, we got a lot of fantasy-themed uh, weapons and loot. We've got um, class mods that have different uh, alignments on them so you can be a chaotic neutral ranger or a uh, lawful yeah, evil yeah. Uh, you know uh, assassin or whatever uh, we've got a gun that shoots exploding swords that when the sword explodes it explodes into a bunch of other swords and then those swords explode we have a gun that gets you drunk called the grog nozzle we have uh, grenades that basically act like magic spells that that regenerate grenade ammo over time like mana and when you throw the grenade out it, you, your character says magic missile or fireball or, or whatever uh, basically any sort of fantasy trope you can think of we took we tried to put a weird borderlands twist on and then we repackaged it in this sort of crazy universe yeah. awesome so uh there was one gun in the main game of borderlands 2 that you contributed your voice to yes. will we be see seeing any other cool little bits like that in here uh you'll certainly see a lot of ash around lord knows because you're in the whole friggin yeah campaign. in the whole campaign so if you don't like so you're basically Tina, like narrating no, it, yeah. you'll like it. I think you'll yeah. like it if you don't like Tiny Tina because we did that thing where we tried to tone her down and make her less like shrill all the time, yeah. less like horribly annoying uh, all, all the time. All, all this. We tried to <laughs> tried minimize to make this, this better, which is just a hard yeah. thing. That's a hell of a task. Uh, but yeah, no, there's there's a bunch of fourth wall breaking stuff, kind of like that gun, spread all throughout the campaign because it all takes place in Tiny Tina's imagination. We have entire quests where it's about this thing, and then Tina goes, Ah, screw it, that's boring, and then just changes it on the fly and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. Sweet. Uh, so how much did you guys collaborate on the uh, the content of this? Did you mostly write it and you're kind of acting, or did you input any of your ideas into this? I mean, we, Anthony does all of the writing. Um, for this particular add-on campaign, we, we kind of tried to find Tina's voice together because, like we were just talking about, in the main game, you get, like, bite-sized bits of Tina. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. she can be as, like, frenetic as, you know, we want to make her because you're not with her the entire game. But if you're with that for 10 hours, that might be kind of intense. And also, like, emotionally, she's in a different place. Like, she's going through different nuances of emotion than she would be in the main game. So we tried to find a balance between her being Tina and her not being so insane all the time. You're like, I can't, I can't play this. Yeah. My ears are going to bleed. So, uh, yeah, we, we worked together on that to try to find a balance. Cool. Uh, do you guys have like a uh, like a like a favorite boss or a favorite enemy that we'll be facing in this game? 
Oh man, I really like the dwarves, the way the dwarves work in our game, because they all dwarves. kind of, they all look a little bit like Salvador, the, the guns are cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, started, they sort of fight like him. The, uh, the, uh, the pixies are actually really cool. We have pixies, and they're the first uh, frenemy type in Borderlands, where if you shoot them on accident, they'll try to kill you, like, which is normal, okay. But if you go up to them and you hit the use button, then they become your friend and they start giving you buffs every once in a while, and they'll fight in combat with you and stuff. So once you see one, it's this target prioritization thing where, oh, I have this gun that makes everything explode. I need to maybe stop using it when a pixie shows up so I can use her and get her on my side and then start fighting. Oh, cool. Sounds sounds crazy. Uh, what about you, Ashley? You got any any favorites? Any any favorite bits? Any favorite moments that we can look forward to without getting into any spoilers or anything? Sure. Um, there are a couple of missions that I, I think are really fun. Uh, there's one uh, for Ellie where you can pick. It, she has you go on a quest for armor, and you can either get her like sexy slave Leia armor, or you can get her like actual functional armor. Um, and there's also another mission with Torg. Uh, like the fake, like ripping off of like the fake gamer girl witch hunt thing. Mm, okay, it's like yeah. uh, Lilith is accusing Torg of being a fake boy gamer, essentially. A fake geek guy. <laughs> a yeah. fake geeky guy because he's like this really ripped, like really like masculine dude, uh, which I thought was really funny. So I'm looking Kind of turning that on its head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. So you mentioned Ellie. She's coming back for this DLC. Will the other characters be making appearances as well? Many yeah. of them, yeah. Since, yeah. since we knew this was sort of our last big add-on campaign, we, we felt like we wanted to have it be a big last hurrah, last sort of bit of fan service. So we brought back characters that are dead, but it's okay because, again, it's in Tina's imagination and it's her version of those characters. So hopefully all the characters you liked, you'll, you'll see again in, in this last, uh, last campaign. Cool. Uh, looks like we're nearly out of time here. But uh, is there anything else, any anything you guys are especially proud of that you want to make sure you talk about here? I really liked your performance. I think you do a lot of really good stuff. Aw, shucks. Thanks. I thought your writing was really funny. Ah! Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> so when, when can we get our hands on Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Key? Uh, June 25th. June 25th. All right, well, thanks a lot, guys.